So the U.S. food supply is buckling under pressure. There's no way other to put it, folks. The pressure has finally got, and the demand has finally got, to the supply. They can't keep up with what is going on. Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me today. And today we're going to start off with a quick little question for you. You ever been out in the woods? Maybe you've been on a dirt bike, maybe uh, a four-wheeler, four-wheel drive, cruising out through the woods and stuff, out in the back country or whatever, and you come across a bridge. But only it's not like a bridge that you've seen before. This is actually called a floating bridge. It's on the water. Now you can drive across these bridges. Weight limits are usually posted, but not all the time. So if you're not sure, you want to try to test it out first a little before you just go zooming across the bridge. Now, these bridges, as you drive across, you're going to feel it buckle. Just like what our food chain is doing right now here in the United States. And the reason for this is because of all the different scenarios that have been taking place. Number one, Charlie Victor 19. That's a no-brainer. We all know about that. And all its little offsprings that it keeps spinning off and everybody freaks out and then goes to the store and tries to buy everything because they think they're going to be locked down again or whatever. You know, I mean, if you're prepped and ready, it's not your problem. Number two, all these severe weather storms that we've been having this winter. Now, I'm a firm believer in, you know what? These come every so many years. You have a couple of good years, you're going to maybe have a couple of bad years. It's just the way the whole Mother Nature thing rolls. Now, you can call it whatever you want to call it. I'll call it Mother Nature. So, in that being said, it's stopping the trucks. It's stopping the trains. Goods and stuff aren't getting through. The number one problem is, is as soon as these people come out and they say, oh, wow, there's a storm coming. And then you see it all over the news and people are watching the Weather Channel 24-7 because, you know, they name all the storms now, you know, the, the winter storms. It's not like hurricane season. We name every little winter storm that comes through. But anyways, they name all these storms. People see that. And now it's an awareness piece and people are freaking out, right? And they're running to the stores because they don't even have enough food for the week. You know, because people don't buy food for any longer than a day or two, all right? Most people only have a couple of days of food in their house, period. Why? It just doesn't make any sense to me. But the prepper can sit back and he can be like, oh, yeah, there's a snowstorm coming. Big deal. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you're prepped and you're ready, that's the whole key and that's the name of the game. The whole part of being a prepper is... Well, folks, you, my friends, are prepped. You are ready. You have taken the time to ensure that you're not put in that situation and you're not part of that equation that has to do with having to run to the store every time that a little snowstorm is going to be coming through that they blow out of proportion. Now, yes, they do get some of these storms right, severe ice and heavy snow and everything else, but if you live in these areas where they get this kind of stuff, you should be used to it, right? But then again, everybody still runs to the store and you empty it out. The supply chain is trying to catch up. And every time that we hit these speed bumps, we go back again. We go back to start and we go back and we got to start all over again and then try to get the trucks and everything in there to get the product on the shelf and then when people start seeing it's coming on the shelves boom they're going to turn around they're going to do this now mark my words this is what's going to happen and comment below what you think is going to happen but i believe with this continues there's going to be limitations on everything that you buy at the store reason being is it's the only way that they're going to be able to get control and to stock the shelves back up so they're full again so when we walk in there, we feel all warm and fuzzy inside because all oh, the stores are full. I don't have to prep. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. It's nothing but smoke and mirrors, folks. It's the government's way of trying to make sure 
and they have the control. You see what I'm saying? They like to have control and they're using the media and everything else. And this way here, they can keep you scared just enough to, well, keep you terrified, to keep you doing what they want you to do. You see, a lot of people out there in the political world don't like people that are prepared. Because for one, if you're a prepper and you're prepared, for two, you also use your head and you can think for yourself. And you know when the BS is flowing really deep and you got to go put your boots on, if you get what I'm saying. All right? Because you are a critical thinker. You have thought about and planned out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, how you're going to survive and everything else. So the U.S. food supply breaking under pressure is really not affecting the preppers. It's probably the other 80 some odd percent of people in this country that is infecting. What can we do? Simple. Make a plan. Make a plan. Stick to the plan. Get your stockpile going. If you live in an area where these type of situations aren't affecting you, aren't in your stores, aren't any, anywhere around you, you're lucky. But you're the ones that should be prepping like crazy. Okay? And for the people that live in the areas where we, you're having all these problems, finding anything in the stores, right down to Ritz crackers, I mean, you're the ones that are going to have to get creative and try to figure out how you're going to put something in your cupboard for a rainy day just in case something really bad does take place. So, in the end, comment below. The U.S. food supply is buckling under the pressure. Number one, what do you think they need to do to get it under control? And number two, what have you done to ensure you don't care? I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. I hope everybody stays safe. You keep prepping. Don't stop. And until next time, I'll catch every one of you on the flip side.